Good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to our question and answers for our call for innovation in the South and Central Africa Regional Innovation Hub. Uh, I would like to notify you that we're recording this session. Uh, this webinar is dedicated to providing information about our, our call for innovations. My name is Evans Chinembiri, and I lead an amazing team that makes the We4F Southern and Central Africa Regional Innovation Hub. In the coming presentation, my colleagues and I will share with you critical information about who we are, the call itself, and the answer to some of the most frequently asked questions that we've received regarding this call for innovation. I'll quickly go over the agenda for today's presentation. I'll give a high level overview of the We4F Grand Challenge and then introduce the We4F South and Central Africa Regional Innovation Hub. I'll discuss the call for innovations focusing on the six elements. That is the call for innovations in overview, themes and targets groups, eligibility criteria, the timeline and give away and give details of where you can apply in the process to do so. Then we'll move on to our pre-submitted questions related to the CFI and we'll answer those as well as any live questions that you might might come up if the ones that are not covered in the pre-submitted questions. Please note that we'll have a one minute survey at the end of this webinar and we'll share the link at the, in the chat box. And whilst we're still here, I'd like to take this opportunity to discuss a few housekeeping items. In this webinar, you will hear and see the presentation, but you will not be able to speak during the session. Please use the chat box for any questions or any technical issues that you may have as we go through the presentation. So without further ado, we'll move on to the overview of the Grand Challenge. So the V4F Grand Challenge is funded by is a multi-donor funded in, uh, initiative. We receive support from the German government, the EU, uh, the government of Netherlands, the government of, C of Sweden through CEDA, the US government through USAID. Okay. At a global level, we have a, a total uh, resource port, port of about $65 million and is really focused on three main areas of the nexus, right? Addressing uh, efficiencies in uh, water, food, energy, food, and water, energy, food, the three that are listed here, as you can clearly see. Um, at a global level, we are one of five hubs. Uh, we've got a South and Southeast Asia hub based in, that is in Thailand, the Middle East and North Africa hub that is um, in Lebanon, the East Africa hub in Kenya, the West Africa hub based in Ivory Coast, and of course, the Southern, Southern and Central African hub that is based in Pretoria. So our approach is, is very unique and, and really centers on us working with the private sector to address challenges that uh, afflict the base of the pyramid, the people that are that need the most help. We, we provide support through our brokering unit to to have have them access capital to help to help them scale. So the idea is that we we pro, we connect them with institutions that provide finance and then help scale their their businesses. And I'll give you a little bit more detail with regards to this. Uh, in addition to that, in our approach, we are also cognizant that there are other issues that affect these businesses that in the environments that they operate in. So we as a hub provide uh, enabling environment support to help strengthen their ability to address the challenges that are uh, that affect them at a micro level as they are engaging and doing their businesses. And the last area of of engagement with our with our group is really through providing innovative solutions to make sure that the interest group, which is the base of the pyramid, really gets access to uh, finance so that they can afford the resources and they'll be able to engage and and, uh, and use the services. Uh, we are focused on 12 main countries. I, I like to think of it as the SADC region, less the less Tanzania and Malawi, and then we add the Central African Republic and Chad to it. So as you can see listed there, we've got Angola, Botswana, the Central African Republic, Chad, the DRC, Eswatini, Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, where our head office is based, Zambia and Zimbabwe. 
Okay. So as a hub, we've got specific tar targets that we have set out that we must achieve as, in order to be deemed a successful project. We are looking to fund at least 30 innovators in the WIF4F Nexus, 30 businesses that are operating in this space. Um, and we're working to find at least 90 instances where we provide technical assistance to help scale these businesses, either their, their business model, help them improve the way they do their work, uh, help them find new customers, new clients, provide any sort of support that helps them grow their businesses uh, that we can lend as a hub. Over and above these, a critical element of what we are supposed to do for these for for these businesses that we're working with is raise at least seven and a half million US dollars uh, in 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 investment funding to help scale and grow their businesses. Ultimately, our goal is to reach at least one one million smallholder farmers, with at least twenty five percent of those being uh, uh, women. And in all the activities that we do, we're, we're focused really and primarily on. Of, on ensuring that we integrate gender and environmental sustainability in, in, in all the work that we do. So I'm gonna move now to discuss a little bit of our call for innovations. So, so the hub supports innovative companies and organizations that work in the South and Central African region to produce more food whilst, produ whilst using less water and energy. So, Together with investors and partners, the WIF4F hub works to scale mid to late stage enterprises that have an environmental and social impact on the water energy food nexus. So through WIF4F, um, companies from the South and Central African region can access financial support of up to 200,000 for innovation. <clears throat> and they also get technical support and investment matching necessary to make food production and farming more sustainable, productive and bountiful. So WIF4F, again, like I said, is looking for mid to late stage enterprises, non-profits non, non uh, that have a for-profit program running with it, as well as organizations based in the South and Central Africa region with an innovative solution to address the water, food, energy, food, water, energy, food, uh, nexus challenges. So applicants, definitely need to meet the minimum requirements outlined in the call for innovation solicitation document and I'll touch on these a little bit later on as we go through the slide. The call for innovation really focuses on six thematic areas. So we're interested in innovations in food production that reduce water usage, innovations that foster the efficient use of water resources for food production, uh, Innovative innovations that encourage the sustainable use of energy and water on 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 farms on on the process of production, energy innovations for for processing and or logistics innovations that are in the food production with efficient energy, as well as anyone who's any organization that has a solution that leverages food waste for energy. So, who are our target groups? So the target organizations that we're looking for are really legacy innovators that were supported during the grand challenges and have, have shown potential for financially sustainable scaling and proven successful products that are in the market. The key takeaway is that they must be proven and they are already successful. So we also provide enterpri enterprises that are for private for-profit companies that are a major part of their business model and innovations innovation addresses the water, energy, food nexus. We also provide support for non-for-profit non -profit, non organizations or non-governmental non organizations or universities which maintain their own budget and can generate revenue and do this by commercializing an innovative product or service that addresses the nexus of, a water, or of, the, water, of, of the water, energy, food nexus. <clears throat> So there are the actors that we could also provide support for, but those are identified on a case by case basis. But for the purposes of this call, uh, it's necessary to note that they must fit the criteria for WIF4F and they can definitely achieve scale. So through support of these organizations, we expect to target impoverished women and men smallholder farmers that are working in all parts of the agricultural value chain. Specifically, our, our interventions will help organizations provide nexus relevant products and services to reach women 
the poor as commercial customers, equipping them with the means to achieve greater earnings and achieve social mobility. So you might be wondering what our eligibility criteria are for, for you to participate in this call for innovations. So the first one is that you must be legally incorporated, um, uh, registered for-profit business and non-for-profit organization or academic institution which are responsible for generating revenue or maintaining a self-operational budget. So you can cover your own costs. The key determinant is that you must have a substantial revenue track record of selling the water energy food nexus relevant product or service. So in terms of size, we are open to all relevant organizations, companies that are ready to scale, but we do encourage uh, applications from small to medium enter enterprises with significant proven, proven past sales and a track record of having a, uh, a product that has Nexus relevant, what we for if Nexus relevant and has traction in the market. I want to stress again that it's it's important and critically important that you you must have uh, past sales already and have had a proven track record that you you are you are operational and can achieve scale. In terms of location, we are looking for applicants that at least that must be reg legally registered in at least one uh, one of the the twelve countries I mentioned earlier. Uh, over and above that, we <clears throat> expect that the grant awardees have matching funds and they're able to demonstrate that. And critically, and more, probably the most crucial element is that all applicants must demonstrate a direct and tangible linkage between the nexus and the value chains. So in addition to this, applicants must also directly or indirectly benefit the, the base of the pyramid or the poor offering opportunities for enhanced income or social mobility and continue to contribute to the uh, gender equality, managing natural resources sustainably and striving for a positive impact on the environment uh, whilst mitigating the negative impact on the environment. So what does a successful we for innovator look like? You need to have a financially sustainable business model. Uh, you must have an innovation that addresses the water food nexus challenge. Have a well-defined plan for expansion that has sustainability built into it uh, and built, sorry, built into the fabric of the intended expansion. The innovator must also display an understanding of the local enabling environment of, or the technology and ensure that their design of the solution is really built up with the user in mind, which is the base of the pyramid or the smallholder farmer in this case. The innovator will demonstrate direct, must demonstrate direct or strong indirect benefits for the poor with an emphasis of on how an innovation benefits women. And a successful innovator will have an understanding of the ESG principles and showcase a strong commitment towards integrating of these principles into their uh, running of their business and their business model. Uh, over and above this, it will, it will be crucial that the, the team has the innovator, the, the organization implementing this has gender balanced team that can scale up the innovation in a sustainable manner. So, what will we not support? So we will not support any organization businesses that do not have a proven track record of sustainable sales and service delivery, and also cannot demonstrate how they can ensure sustainable benefits in line with the we for of course. So if your innovation does not uh, demonstrate a positive impact to the impoverished uh, women and innovators uh, that cannot clearly demonstrate a link between the impact on the environment and impact on the uh, base of the pyramid, we will, not, we will not provide support to those. We will also not provide support to innovators that focus on research and development uh, for a product without a clearly defined market or proven market demand. So we, mean we will not be supporting early stage businesses that have not proven, that have no traction in the market. So innovators that have not achieved a minimum customer base of at least 5,000 customers or end users per product or service that costs uh, less than 100 US dollars. 
or innovators that have not reached a minimum customer base of at least 1,000 uh, customers or end users uh, per product or service that costs greater than 100 US dollars. Continuing on this theme, uh, we will not uh, support, sorry, I skipped a slide. We will not support uh, businesses that do not that op that do not operate as legally registered entities in one of the at least one targeted country. Uh, organizations that have no support on agricultural products that have support that provide support to agricultural products or provide a service without directly linking it to significant and sustainable water or energy efficiency components will not receive support or links to this food sector as a whole. So focus on on either a water solution that has no link to the food sector will not receive support and focus on solar or any other wastewater treatment projects that do not have a clear link to the food value chain will also not receive support. Uh, similarly, any large infrastructure products projects do not get support as well as uh, innovators that sell that 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 have an innovation that is that does not constitute a, a large significant of their revenue will not receive support uh, critically and probably most important that any any organization that is a that is somehow a government entity will not receive support uh, with regards to that as well okay so i'm going to touch on the timeline for the call for innovations itself uh, right now, the critical takeaway from the slides are these two elements that we are in the first stage of our call for innovations, which is uh, has been running uh, and which will run until the 16th of September. Uh, that's the concept note stage. We're asking all the innovators on this call to fill out and, and apply and do that. Once we we review these concept note stage, we move on to what we call the full application proposals. The organizations that are eligible and we found fit to continue, we asked them to expand on the concept that they provide and develop a full proposal that we will discuss. This full proposal will then review uh, ourselves internally. And once that has been reviewed, we, we, we shortlist uh, the most promising innovations and organizations and invite them to do a teleconference with us. Uh, once that's done, uh, those that are successful and was, we're happy with the answers, we ask them to attend a pre a, a boot camp, and then once they go through the boot camp, they go through what we call a pre award survey, where they submit a series of documents, and once they meet that criteria and are robust and are deemed to be financially sound, uh, we can then provide support. We provide uh, grant awards, and we sign agreements and finalize that. So I'm going to touch a little bit on the, the criteria that we use to review the concept notes. OK, so we have three main categories that we're going to be focusing on. The first category is the viability of the innovation. And this this category really focuses on the innovations description, how the innovation will provide value to end users and how it differs from existing pro products. And the also we'll be checking the relation of the innovations the, the, sorry, the innovation's relevance to the water and food and nexus and how it addresses the challenge thereof. This this uh, category has a weight of 35%. And then the second category we'll be looking at is the business and financial viability. And this relates to the revenue and the plans for expansion, the total addressable and potential market shares and the product service costs. Uh, this is a total weight of, of 30%. Uh, this is where we also ch check the traction in the market and in the past how that has gone. Uh, <clears throat> we also then check the, the third category is really the the innovations uh, applicability and sustainability with regards to specific ESG principles and within the context of developing countries. So this speaks to the location where the innovation will be deployed, the extent to which the innovator has local partnerships and how or, or has an understanding of what the the innovation is and how integrated the specific ESG principles are to the to the 
uh, innovation as well as how it impacts the our target beneficiaries who are our our small smallholder farmers and the the vulnerable groups. This all this has a weight of thirty five percent as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the call for innovations application itself. So as I'm sure you're wondering now is about how you can apply for this opportunity. So I'm going to give you maybe six or seven points that you should really do. And I and I need you if you haven't been paying attention all along, this is the part where you should really, really uh, give your full attention because this is where the, the rubber hits the road. OK, the first thing is that you need to review the solicitation document, and this is really, really important. You need to read it and you need to understand it uh, thoroughly because that influences whether you are eligible to apply or not and uh, how if, if any of the work that you put in works out. I, I'll say this because in our first call for innovations, we had a lot of uh, um, innovations that did not uh, innovate as companies that did not do this and as a result didn't go through to the next stage. Secondly, review the eligibility criteria and ensure that you meet the eligibility criteria as defined in the solicitation document. OK, once you've done that, uh, the third step you need to do is to create an SM apply account. Uh, and this is where you would go. If you go there, this is where you would see that. And once you get in there, you probably click the apply button and you'll see follow this link. You'll get to this place eventually. OK. Uh, critically to note is that. <clears throat> You need to review the complete list of application questions and note that all applications must be submitted via the application portals. Submissions via, submitted via email or any other medium will not be accepted. So you need to use the SMA apply platform. Um, applicants can save their progress uh, as they're going through it. There's a they click a save and continue editing function at the bottom at the bottom of the application. All that, all questions that are marked with an asterisk are mandatory, so please ensure that you fill them before you submit the application. The application deadline itself is on September 16th, uh, closing at 4 p.m. Please make sure that you submit well before the application deadline. We've had instances where people have said to us, I had no electricity, I had this, that and the other. Something always goes wrong on the last day. I would advocate strongly that everybody make sure that their submission is done by the 15th of September. Uh, everybody's at this time will be logging in, systems might collapse and so on and so forth. You don't want to be caught up in all of that. Do it well in, ad well in advance and do it uh, well ahead of time. So move on now to the section where we have pre-submitted questions. And I'm going to be going through these with my colleague Sulu who will be reading the questions and, and I'll be responding to them. Okay. Uh, thank you, Evans. Hello, everyone. If we are based outside the target countries, are we eligible to apply? Thanks for that, Sulu. Uh, if you're, you're only eligible if you're operational or intend to introduce your innovation in, in one of the target, the 12 target countries I, I, I listed before. Hello. How many innovations may I apply for under the same call? So applicants have a, can submit up to three applications uh, per applicant, so three different innovations. Yeah. Am I eligible to apply as an individual? And this is a, a critically important as well. No, only registered organizations that are not government entities can apply. Wait, please. Is it required that the applicant must be the proprietary owner of the innovation or the, or can the innovation be from another company and the applicant wants to import and promote this innovation in the southern and central Africa region? OK, so the applicant must be the proprietary owner or be in consortium with the proprietary owner of the innovation. If my company started in 2020 but already has the required client base, can I apply? So uh, yes, you can apply, uh, you, but you must demonstrate that your company is a stable entity with stable functioning operations and already has consistent sales and a client base 
of more than 5,000 customers if it is uh, selling a product that is less than 100 US dollars and 1,000 customers if it is selling a product that is more than one, uh, more than a hundred dollars. Is it 5,000 or 1,000 customers reached in total or for each particular innovation? If you're a company with multiple products and you want to apply with one of them, you must demonstrate the total number of your current client base related to that innovation and the potential to expand to a bigger customer base. In other words, yes. Are innovations targeting biodiversity conservation eligible or must it be a production system? So if your innovation is only targeting biodiversity conservation without financially sustainable business model, it's not eligible to apply. All applications submitted must be submit, submitted to WIFOF for the WIFOF CFI 2 must fulfill the eligibility criteria. Oh. Does the impact have to be for the poor women and the environment or impacting one of them is, is sufficient? So you will not be excluded if you cannot claim an impact in all the mentioned areas. However, the more cumul cumulative your impact is and the one that you can claim related to all the areas, uh, it gives you uh, a better standing in, in the event that there's very tight competition. So we would prefer that. Okay. How should a company deal with the environmental, social and governance criteria? Uh, so the, as, as I mentioned in the criteria, you, you need to demonstrate a basic understanding of the ESG issues and you should showcase a strong commitment towards ESG integration into your business model. Are SMEs that are fully owned by a larger holding com company eligible? We encourage SMEs to apply, provided they meet the eligibility criteria and are financially independent with a separate governance from the holding company. Yeah. Can an NGO apply? And we've been asked this question a lot. So yes, NGOs can apply if they can prove that they are market oriented and that their innovation is scalable and as a sustainable revenue model. Traditional NGOs projects that are seeking grant funding and do not have clients to purchase their innovations will not receive support. Are educations eligible to apply to the CFI? All registered educational institutions are eligible to apply for, for this call for as long as they have a market proven financially sustainable business model that is related to the innovation that they want to apply with. Can a governmental university be a partner of the group? So government entities are not eligible to apply for this call. However, a publicly funded university can take part as a partner of a group consortium as long as it's not the lead institution. What is, what is the acceptable range for matching funds? So this is not fixed in the core and we will review this on a case by case basis. But, uh, but however, in our experience, a high percentage of matching funds that is already secured or in negotiation will be an asset and will increase your chances of selection in the WIF program. Should financial statements be provided in English or can they also be provided in other languages? So all documents must be submitted in either English or in French. Can a joint venture of two companies or SMEs apply together to meet the application criteria? Yes, yes, you can. Um, you can apply as a joint venture led by one lead applicant and demonstrate true partnership, a clear definition of roles and complementary aspects towards certain products or innovation. I think to add to this, I also want to make sure that if, if you are an organization that is based outside of the 12 countries, the lead organization must be one of the 12 countries that are in the 
must be based or registered in the, one of the 12 countries that we've mentioned earlier. At this point, I want to check with my colleagues if we have any further questions that have been coming up in the chat. The question from Dr. Ambrose is, if the organization headquarters are outside Southern and Central Africa, for example, in Rwanda, and has operations in Southern Africa, in Southern African countries through host country agreements, is it eligible? So the, the, the only way this organization is eligible is if it can demonstrate that it has true partnerships with these organizations that are in the that are registered in one of the 12 countries that have been identified. So the, the idea would be to, to demonstrate a partnership uh, that is existing and the lead organization must be the one that is based within the region. Yep. Okay, Bandile asks, is there a similar program for startups? So at this stage, the hub is only focused to mid uh, to late stage organizations and we won't be working with startups. But we won't be we won't be uh, providing support for 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 startups right now. Yeah. My, my recommendation would be, Vandile, please subscribe to the newsletter, uh, and then we'll, as we find um, opportunities for uh, engagement, we can then uh, share them with that. We usually use the newsletter as a platform to do so. Okay. Thank you, Evans. And Virginia asks, can a microfinance institution be considered under other criteria? That's a very nuanced question. So uh, you are saying a a microfinance institution. So the key, the, cri the, 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 the criteria are strict. You must be able to demonstrate a link to the V4F nexus, firstly. Secondly, if you can do that, you have must have a track record. If you meet that eligibility criteria and there is a clear link to the nexus, you will then be considered then. So uh, my recommendation would be to maybe look at the uh, criteria and then from that, uh, make a judgment call whether you, I don't have enough information right now to, to pass a judgment right now on that. If you have any follow on questions, you can write the We4F Africa email address. Uh, and I think the, the my colleagues will put it put that in the in the chat box. And then we have a one minute survey uh, that we can then share with the team that you can then look sh share with us any specific questions that you've got. Then we can have a question that says um, it's not a question, more of a comment. A thousand clients for one innovation above one hundred dollars is feasible for products of high value. So I, I think the 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 issue is is that um, we are looking for end users uh, and that's, that, that, is, that makes sense. So in the event that you are selling towards households, we can then count the individual end users as households, uh, the number of households times the number of uh, end users. So it's a, a, something that you must consider as you are preparing your application. If an SME has less than 5,000 customers for a product that costs $100 or less, is it not eligible even though it ticks all the other boxes? So the criteria are such that you must have at least 5,000 customers, so it will not be eligible. It won't meet the eligibility criteria. I think my, F, my preference would be that before you, you put in your application, please make time to review the, the criteria and before you make the application. And thank you so much for having joined. Uh, we look forward to seeing your applications. If there's one last thing I want you to take away is you need to start the application process now. Start today, don't wait until the last day. Uh, we look forward to reading about you and your concepts and your great ideas.